All artwork created in this video is copyright Leilani Joy. Artwork may not be reproduced without the written consent of the artist. All rights reserved. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Art Nouveau with your host Leilani Joy. This is my video art blog where I document my creative process and give you guys some tips and tricks along the way. Now on today's episode, I'll be creating a brand new piece for you guys that will be making its debut in a gallery showing in Aberdeen, Scotland, which I am super excited about since this will be my first time ever showing any of my original artwork overseas. And um, so let me tell you a little bit more about the show. Um, you may know that I'm in an artist group called the Bad Apple Artist Collective, which is basically a group of artists from all around the world that share a passion for their craft and we all sort of embrace the pop surrealism surrealism genres. You can see all of our work on Facebook at facebook.com slash badappleartistcollective. And um, so we are going to be coming together for the first time ever and having a live group show. And personally, I can't wait to be showing my work along with all these really incredible, unique artists. When I first found out that the theme for the show was going to be Alice in Wonderland, my first reaction was, oh my god, not again. But after I thought about it for a while, I thought this would be a really great way to challenge myself to do something new and different with a subject matter that I really enjoy and I'm passionate about um, and make it something new and exciting. So with that said, um, I've, I'm going to do a little research and reference and maybe some sketches and we'll go ahead and start painting. So I've been saving this photo reference for a really long time just because I love this photograph and I love her bright cyan colored hair. So I decided for some reason I just got really fixated on this idea of Alice having this blue-green hair and I think that's going to be the jumping off point for my painting. Um, so I've decided to um, start doing some conceptualizing using Photoshop and just sort of block in some shapes using different um, shades of gray here. And it's a really good exercise if you're really a little unsure about your colors and things like that. You can work out all the values and make sure that your composition is working and that your character is popping from the background before you even worry about color. Then once I have my values where I want them and I kind of squint and can tell that the composition works, I'll start laying in color layers and just sort of build it up from there until I have a nice color comp for me to work from. From there, I'll start on a more developed sketch that will transfer to the final painting. Yay, now for the fun part. It's time to start mixing and matching colors. So I've got all my paints out here and I've got my nice little um, ceiling container. And basically I'm just going to try and mix um, a background layer that matches my color comp that I made. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it and um, then I'm going to paint little samples right on my color comp to test um, how close my color matching is. Um, once I have a color that I'm happy with, then I'm going to go ahead and paint my entire um, panel with that background. Now make sure you mix plenty of your background color so that you can come back and use it later if you need to clean up any edges or smudges. Next I want to create a very smooth clean edged um, oval shape that's like the, the mirror that I've designed. Um, I'm going to be using a product called Frisket which is basically a plastic film that's used for masking off areas of your painting that you don't want to get paint on basically. So I'm going to cut out my nice even oval that I've measured and um, made sure that it was pretty even. And then I'm going to line it up with the center line of my painting as you can see here to make sure it falls right in the center. I'm going to keep my center oval because I'm going to use that again later and I'll show you why. Um, you're going to want to peel up your frisket very carefully. It's super sticky and a little bit difficult to use. So I recommend sticking down one edge smoothly and then peeling off the rest of the backing. Next, you're going to coat it with matte medium and let that dry thoroughly. This will keep your paint from leaking underneath the masking and getting on the areas that you're trying to protect. So once that's dry, I'm going to paint in this nice little organic flowy shape in the inner circle that will form my mirror. 
and there you have it it's already done next I'm going to take my inner oval and I'm going to trim off about a quarter inch of the outside edge and I'm going to place that back in the center where I've created um, my little swirly painting of the mirror and then I'm going to take a lighter color to make the edge of the mirror so I'm gonna take some white and just paint over this little trim that I've created using the frisket and again I coated this with matte medium before I put the white layer down and I'm gonna let this dry very thoroughly and then when I peel up my oval here you're gonna see that it has a nice clean edge also, you might get a little sticky glue left over from the frisket, which you can clean up with some warm, soapy water. And you can take your background color that you still have, that you saved, and also clean up any edges. And there you have it, using Frisket 101. It's um, a little tricky, but it's such an awesome tool, and I really love it. I haven't used it in a long time, but I recommend trying it if you like getting clean graphic shapes like I do. Just be patient with yourself, though, because it's a little tricky to use your first time. Okay, now it's time to transfer my drawing to my background. I have a piece of Sorrel transfer paper under my original sketch, and I'm just taking a pen here and lightly tracing over my entire drawing to transfer it. Um, I did in the process decide that since the background is so dark, I couldn't really see my transfer lines for her face. So I went ahead and started blocking in some white back there so that I can retransfer her face since it's so detailed. Um, I didn't really think of doing that before, but I think it's going to work out a lot better for me. See, it shows up a lot better on the white, and that way I can just go ahead and keep building and um, painting on top of that. After that, I'm going to continue with my little color matching exercise on my color comp here and mixing a color for her hair and a color for her dress and continuing to block in all those nice colors that I've came up with in my sample. What do you guys think of my cute little Jabberwocky? I think he's just adorable. I wish I had a little plush doll of him or something. Can someone make me one? I'd really like that. Um, I'm using a little um, paint dauber here to make nice little even circles on him. Uh, Q-tip works really good too. Um, I should mention that Q-tips are one of my favorite tools. They're amazing and they're uh, disposable as well so you don't have to clean them. They also have pointed q-tips which are really handy. Um, they make nice sharp little edges. I recommend uh, adding these to your toolkit. Your hair looks so pretty today. Yes, it does. Oh, hello. Um, have you guys seen my mini Leilani Joy action figure for sale now? No, just kidding. This is actually a Monster High doll. Have you guys seen these? These are the coolest dolls ever. Like, I just recently found out about them. Um, I was in the grocery store, actually, and this little girl came up to me, and she looked at me, like, all wide-eyed, and she was like, you look just like my Cleo Monster High doll. And I was like, I, I don't I don't know what that is. I have no idea. So anyway, I ran home that night and I was like, what is this? And I looked it up and I was like, dang, these dolls are so awesome. Like when I was little, I would have had to have every single one. So anyway, I came across Cleo um, and I did my own little custom of her. Um, her hair was already like this, which is crazy. Like they're totally ripping off my style. Thanks, Mattel. You owe me money. Um, but anyways, I, I found her this little outfit on Etsy, and she has a little owl, because that's my favorite animal, and I got her these really awesome little stockings, and these 
shoes. Like, I seriously have shoes like this. It's, it's crazy. And um, I also had to pick up um, one of Operetta because she's like rockabilly. I mean, these things are so awesome. Like, I have them in my studio now, and um, they just sort of inspire me, and they're good reference. Like, if I were to design a doll, seriously, Monster High dolls. Dang it. I wish I would have thought of that. So anyway, here's my twinsie. Jeez. Okay, enough creepy doll talk. But anyway, before I show you guys um, how my Alice turned out, I want to tell you guys a few quick things. Um, as you may have noticed, I have some giant canvases of my Mad Hattress and my Alice here with me today. Um, these are 24 by 32, and these are available for $295 unframed, and they come in a variety of sizes as well. Actually, I think I only have one more Mad Hattress left since I'm selling only editions of 10. Um, I think this is 9 of 10, so if you want one of these Mad Hattress canvas reproductions, um, you better contact me really quick because I'm pretty sure I only have one left. Maybe two. Maybe two. Not sure. All right. Um, want to tell you guys one other quick thing. Um, make sure you stay tuned to the very end of this video because I'm going to have a secret special announcement um, about this new piece. So um, make sure you stay tuned for that and you could win a little Alice in Wonderland themed prize pack from yours truly. So if you want one of those, be sure to um, stay tuned to the end of this video. All right, guys. Well, that's it for me. I hope you liked watching the process of my brand new Alice. I have to say, I, I really dig this piece, and it's sort of amazing to see just how my work is evolving and changing. I know someone said on the progress, like, this doesn't look like your other work, and I, I just want to respond to that by saying, you know, I don't ever want to get stuck doing the same thing over and over again. I really want to continue to grow and adapt and grow into my own style and um, my own artwork. So if my work starts to change and evolve, I think that's okay. You know, I want to always be striving to improve and become a better artist all the time. So that's a good thing for me if it doesn't look like all my other work. All right, guys. So without further ado, here is my final Alice, and I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. And here's how my finished painting looks all framed and ready to make her journey to Scotland. I hope she has a lovely time and if you're in the area, I hope you can visit her. I hope you guys like how my new Alice piece turned out, but don't leave yet because I have a couple more quick things to tell you. First of which is, if you're interested in purchasing this original piece, um, please stay tuned to the Bad Apple Artist Collective Facebook page. There's going to be a um, gallery album that has all the work from the show and the prices and details on how to purchase this. Or you can contact me directly at sales at leilanijoy.com and I'll let you know the price and how to, um, how to make that happen for you. Um, the show does run till January, but you are welcome to purchase the piece before that. We'll put a little sold sticker on here in the gallery and it will be shipped to you at the end of the show. So um, email me for more information on that. If you're not in the market for an original piece, I will have limited edition canvas reproductions of Alice War Blue, a very, very limited edition of only 10, which will be hand embellished and signed, numbered, and include a certificate of authenticity, of course. Or finally, if you're interested in one of my fine art prints, I have a special treat for you. I'm doing a little exclusive Alice in Wonderland prize pack to the first 10 11 by 14 fine art prints that are sold from my Etsy shop right here. And it will include a signed, um, autographed, and doodled postcard to you um, from me, and um, it'll be a random Alice postcard, or you can tell me which one you want, and you will also receive a mini print of Alice Returns, a little 4x6, and finally you will also get a little button featuring Alice War Blue, brand new for you. So you'll get all these things in a little prize pack if you are the first 10 people to buy an 11 by 14 print of Alice War Blue. And you can find them in my Etsy shop right here and it will say first 10 prints and it'll have the little note about the prize pack. And once those are sold out, you'll still be able to get the print, but you won't get the little special prize pack included. So um, run off and get those really quick and um, pick up some other Alice accessories and other goodies while you're at it. 
Okay, you guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this new piece. I'm going to be doing a second piece to accompany her, so that will be the next episode super soon, so come back for that. And be sure to check out Art Nouveau for more tips, tricks, and other artist advice. You can also find my Frequently Asked Questions page over there if you have a question for me. And um, be sure to tune in to my Facebook page and Twitter for updates, contests, and giveaways. Okay, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this trip down the rabbit hole, and I will see you guys in the next episode.